this one's for the culture. Me and wifey in the room thinking of a master plan Thinking how we can influence the culture from where we stand Knowing that our steps are ordered by the master's hand Still ten toes down, we ain't switching up the stance The mission of this music ain't just to make them dance Trying to tell them about the rock cause they build- And welcome, welcome, welcome to this bonus edition of The Bond Chronicles I am your host, Mr. Bond Chronicles And I'm blessed to be here with my host this is Bond Chronicles. And we are at the Bond Chronicles. Uh, we would like to thank you for tuning in to this joyous occasion, this lovely day, this opportunity of a lifetime to really, as Ye did on Valentine's Day, give flowers to someone very deserving. And so today we have a deep dive into what I believe is a transcendent documentary, uh, arguably should get win some awards of this year. No? I'm, I'm just listening. Okay. Uh, I would be very surprised if it's not nominated for some things. But we are talking about the Genius documentary. It was a three-part documentary that was on Net- that is on Netflix. The final version came out yesterday. And we were, or I was so impressed by it that we decided to give you some extra insight uh, into it so that if you haven't watched it, uh, there will be some spoilers. And if you have watched it, hopefully you'll have some comments and thoughts. Uh, I'm sure there'll be some comments and thoughts because we're talking about Kanye West here. So, you know. That is true. Fittingly, on the day of the documentary's documentary's last installment. Ye got divorced and dropped a video uh, in which he quote-unquote kidnaps and plants uh, Kim Kardashian. She's lost. She got rid of the West. Um, Planted her current boyfriend in a field, uh, planted some roses, watered them, then cut those roses and sent them to her in the back of a truck. And he, I guess, is carrying around his head and the easy music video. Uh, That's healthy. So I'm all for it. Uh, I have come to terms that I am a toxic individual and I enjoy toxicity when someone has been wronged. Uh, And although my perception has changed of uh, divorce and adultery and what that looks like, I do understand hurt people lashing out. And I would much rather it be in what I believe, and I think most Yay fans believe are jokes at this point and just trolling, uh, versus what I've seen in other cases where real life physical harm is happening to people. So uh, before we get into it, did you have anything you would like to share? I don't know. I don't I don't think so. We can just jump right into it. Great. So uh, with this documentary, it is, as I mentioned, a three-part documentary, and it starts with the really background of Kanye West. And I think the thing for me is going into it, I didn't know what to expect. Mm. I heard maybe sometime last year there was a documentary coming. Um, It was going to span his entire career. So I was super excited. When I found out that it was only three parts, I was a little concerned because I felt He's accomplished a ton. And at that point, it had been in like two months. So I can only imagine what it would be like to track his career from really start to finish or start to present. Uh, However, I was pleasantly surprised in the way in which it was done. I was really impressed by the foresight to document via video uh, the time in which things were happening. I think that's even for us, something I've thought about is we could probably do a better job of recording uh, different things that we're doing uh, in our day-to-day lives as this podcast continues to evolve. We take pictures of our kids, but I think there's more documentation stuff that we could have so that our kids can watch stuff versus a slideshow of pictures. Uh, So it was great foresight in my belief to document it. 
But I think all of that stems from the biggest takeaway I think I had was Kanye's always believed in himself. And I think a lot of that comes from his mother and his mother's belief in him. And on this podcast, we've talked not really directly, but indirectly about the validation of men. And we talked about actually on our last podcast about supporting your partner. And I spoke of the importance of being able to support um, your significant other. And I definitely suggest you guys go back and watch that if you haven't. Uh, But I think we see how important that was at a critical point in his life when he had, by all accounts, done everything he should have needed to do to get the, the, the opportunity that he deserved and he didn't get it, he had someone there to support him, someone there to uplift him, someone there to stand by him and encourage him, even as confident of an individual he is. So if someone that confident needs affirming, I think it's a testament to all of us to say we all need some form of validation, some form of affirming, even if you know that you are it. Uh, So that's my first big point. I don't want to talk too much because I've talked about five minutes and I want to let you get a chance to get in and we can go from there. Uh, (laughs) I have to agree. I didn't know what to expect when I heard about the docuseries. I wasn't sure how interested I was going to be in watching it Um, just because I don't, I don't want something that he, because he's done a lot to me, negative and positive in the last, let's say four or five years. And I didn't want this docu docu series to taint how I see him, not just as a person, but as an artist. Um, and then to hear that it was going to span his entire career, like I didn't know who was making it, I didn't know who was behind it, and I was just like, I'm not about to sit here and watch seven hours, eight hours of Kanye patting himself on the back. Like, I could do without that in my life. Um, and I was a little worried that that's what that was going to be. Um, given the Drink Champs interview. Um, what was that, a month or so ago, a couple months ago? Yeah, a couple months. Um, and then the interview with light skin guy. Uh, Jason Lee. Jason Lee. Hollywood Unlocked. Yeah, Hollywood Unlocked. Like, I liked what I saw. And so if it were in that kind of format, I was definitely going to be into it. But overall, I just didn't know what I was getting myself into. Um, I waited until all three parts were out to watch it all. So the I could- worst. You still watched it without me, so it don't matter. I did. Anyway, um, I watched it all in one sitting, and I really enjoyed it. I'm a documentary person. I really like to find out about people and get, you know, different takes on, especially famous people who are super impactful in the world. Um, So I was pleasantly surprised by how it was done, the... The way that Kanye was portrayed, I guess, is the, the word. Um, it was just really good. Um, I will say, I think they could have done a better part, better, just a better, they could have done it better at the end when they were, when they jumped from, I think, I guess, 08, 08 to, to present. I think it was like 14 and then they came present. Okay, so those two time time jumps, time spans, I think they could have done a better job at presenting them instead of the way that it was portrayed. Um, but overall, high level, I just thought it was really good. Um, so I agree with that. The other quote-unquote criticism I would have is it was narrated by one person the entire time. And I would have liked to have seen maybe more because you got people's perspective of how they viewed Kanye, but it wasn't like a sit down piece of Kanye. Mm -hmm. No one was interviewed. Right. There wasn't an interview portion. And I feel like that could have broke up some of the monotony in Cootie's voice that by the third showing, I was kind of over uh, that. And then there was no real sit down with Kanye either. No. Uh, so I thought it was an interesting choice in how they 
put it together. Uh, and then I did like the cinematography of having some of the, even when it was new, new videos, they had the old camera filter on it mm -hmm. um, at different times. And I was actually surprised at how good the quality was for some of the stuff that happened in the early 2000s. Because I remember when I was in school, we had like digital cameras, but those things sucked. Well, they were they were using a professional camera. So e although they have advanced have a you, lot. There was great, there was professional TVs back then too. And if you put that thing on today, you'd be horrified. The video has definitely advanced a lot. So I, I do agree with that. Like, I was surprised. They showed that video from 98. And I just knew, like, who I was looking at the screen. Like, who are these people? Like, what is this on the screen? But all of the pictures were, were pretty clear and concise. Yeah. Uh, I also think you got... I would have liked to have heard more about how, how Kanye started music. They really started with he was already on as a producer. Mm -hmm. He had uh, they basically he had just done the blueprint and going from there. I would have liked to, and I may, I'm guessing Cootie wasn't around based on the timeline, but would have mm, no because he didn't. He met it. him in '98, right? And he party. met him at that party, and from there, like, but he, he didn't was with them. No, because he was in Kanye left Chicago to go to New York, and Cootie then came, and that's when they started filming. They mm, did the doc true, once they true, went true, to New true. York. Once, they, once he moved to New York, and we start we see him in the car with um, Black Star, basically. Um, and so it would have been nice to know a little bit more about his process of how he found music. He talked about his mom being an English major, but and how she bought him the machine, but learning how he learned from No ID and. I can't think of the guy's name. Doug Infinite. Doug Infinite. Uh, that would have been nice to go into a little bit more, but because it was only a three-part series, I don't know that you could spend that much time there. I will say what impressed me in a lot of ways is Kanye is Kanye. And whether it's his friend calling him out on the radio and how he pulled up immediately and addressed the situation, then he went to the radio and addressed it, to on a number of occasions where people kept trying to label him as a producer and he had to keep checking him like, no, I'm a rapper. And then the one guy in the hall is like, well, you're the best producer rapper. And he's like, what is that? Like, it's similar to we watched the Dame Dash interview with Shannon Sharp. And although I think Dame was a little more brash in his approach. A little. A little more. Br I mean, Kanye's still pretty brash. So in that scheme of things, we're still dealing with very brash individuals. But I think the mentality is the same. I am this, and you are going to call me this. I'm not going to let you slide by saying whatever may have been said. Now, again, how Dame went about correcting Shannon Sharp was a little abrasive, and I'm a fan of Shannon, so I didn't like you talking about to Shannon like that. But I think the mentality is still the same. I'm never going to be okay with you calling me a producer rapper. The same thing, I think it was in the Drink Champs when they said people when he, people call me a rapper, like you're that's too small. I'm too great in that. Uh, so his ability to stand on what he believes, his ability to quote unquote call people out and give certain people credit. The same thing we saw in Drink Champs, I saw very very early on, and his ability to stay consistent and quote unquote. Fight be countercultural at such an early age explains why he is the way he is today. And for me, that's what it takes. And I feel like most people give those people credit for that once they make it. But when you see people today that act like that, that haven't achieved the success, they're labeled a certain way. And I think the idea that genius people are a little different, are a little off, Kobe Bryant's workman-like mentality, Michael Jordan's drive to success, it's, it's heralded when there's success behind it. But if, you, if people don't see the success, then they label you arrogant and conceited and obnoxious. And if you do anything that's against the norm, then they want to put you in this box. And I would love for us to get to a place where we get out of that, where people that speak differently than culture aren't attacked and labeled 
in such negative terms because we appreciate the great the whole time Kanye has been producing all of this life changing world changing content. But anytime he says something against the norm, he gets put into this really small crazy box. And it's 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 concerning and it's it's um it can be a deterrent for other people because if they don't have the resolve to continue to believe in what they can accomplish, we could be losing out in this world on great innovation because people stepped on the fires that people had burning in them. And I loved to see that even when your big brother Jay-Z didn't co-sign you and wouldn't sign you, even when everybody was saying, you're going to be a star, you're going to be a star, but nobody was willing to get behind him, he never quit. And it took him, whether it was bum-rushing Rockefeller offices, it took going to other record labels, it took him continuing to make beats and networking. And that was the other piece. I saw so many people today that we appreciate that were grinding then. Yeah. And the and I'll stop there because you're looking at me. <laughs> but I just want the world to see. I wish the world could see that, see it differently, but I digress. No, I was just thinking about how long you had been talking, and I can't remember where we started, like what um what got us talking about that. Um, and I had a question, and I forgot it, but I guess to go back, I will say it's cool to see. Like I said, it's cool to see where he started. Um when they did that clip of him at the Jermaine Dupri birthday party in 98, like I can remember back to 1998 and I wasn't thinking, I can't think of anything or any reason why I would even remember Kanye West. And then they started talking about all the artists that he had already produced for right. before he ever even thought about producing for Blueprint, met Jay-Z, anything. He already had all these accolades under his belt. And then later on in the documentary to find out he was getting paid like $500 for beats. And it's like, I can't think of a single Kanye West beat to, in my mind, that's not a hit. Like, period. Um, Kanye does not miss. And I was going to ask you, there's a question, do you think he gets the credit that he deserves as a producer? Because we put him in the conversation with the Timberland, with Pharrell, with Q-Tip, with all these other really great producers. But in my mind, when I think about all the work that Kanye has put in, would you say that he's probably the number one producer to probably ever do it? Um, and this is, this is the hard part about doing this now is... It's prisoner of moment ish. I'm sure if Dr. Dre or Timbaland or Pharrell or someone like that had a documentary, it may sway your opinion or my opinion, so to speak. But for me, and then I came up and I was uh, playing the the dream song by Game off his documentary, and obviously the game was just at the most recent listening party, and they have a song together, which is the video I was talking about. Like to see some of this stuff come full circle. I don't think it's close. Like to do the blueprint, which is by all accounts, classic album to do a good amount of the black album, classic album to do all of uh, much of his albums. And he has a bunch of classic albums and songs to, to be on, you know, the game and all those old rock, like I, and Foxy I, I Brown, like, and I said to you today, I said, I wish I could get a list of all of the things the songs that he's produced, I think it would blow people's minds if we could really see all that he's done. And that's the great thing about verses when you learn about certain songs. Like I think John Legend wrote something for, I forget who he said he wrote a song for, but it was somebody like huge and he was such so young. And John Legend was it in was it. the same song. Um uh what's his name? Uh, it's, it's not it's not gonna who did Babyface go against? Teddy, Teddy Riley. It, yeah, was, yeah. it was the same song. I can't think of which song yeah. it was, but it was the same song. And you're just like, what? But also an influence. 
So as a producer, the other part to producing, I don't think people get enough credit for is putting people on certain songs and bringing the best out of them. And I think whether it's Fabio that we hear today, whether it's Pusha T, whether it's a myriad of artists, not only do the beats be just um, impeccable and amazing and how do you even think of that, but then to put certain artists on them and then for them to always seemingly elevate their talent, like, I don't think it's close. Uh, I agree. Um, there are a lot of really great producers out there who've had really long, successful careers. But the way that Kanye has won, he's, he, you can say a lot of people have been involved in the culture, shape the culture. He He's had his hand on the culture for the better part of 20, 25, 25 years, years. And again, there's not a Kanye beat for himself or other people that I can think of that's not that that's, that's a miss. Um, you think of people like Scott Storch. He's been around for a long time, but I can't think currently on the radio right now of a beat that I can identify as a Scott Storch beat. The same thing with like Timbaland and you know, certain other people, you just don't hear or feel their impact as much as you used to. Kanye came on the scene and a Kanye beat is a Kanye beat. And I mean, obviously he gets paid what he's worth now. hundred percent. But As he should. Yeah, most definitely. It's just insane to see like proof. Proof, proof, proof. Because it's one thing to say, oh, I did this for a beat or I did this and you're getting credit that you don't deserve. But to see the plaques on the wall and to see his name listed with all these people before anyone ever knew his name. Like, I thought that was really dope. And I think it's also important to your point when you say people didn't know him, fans and regular people didn't know him. But you heard from Memphis Bleak to a bunch of other people, he's coming, he's the best producer, he's this, he's that. And that was then. And for him to still be here today as arguably the best producer, like, I don't know how, and I guess I love music, but you would think at some point maybe you get bored. Like, how many different, how many beats has he made? Because he talks about how he made five beats a day for what three summers. I forget what the line is in the song. But to put out that much quality content, we had the Wayne conversation a long time ago about that run that Wayne went on. And I said the mixtapes and the albums that he put out were just, he wasn't missing. But that was like a four or five year run. Like we've talked about, kanye has been doing this for 20, 25 years. And this is just the producing we're talking. Mm -hmm. Like, to see that, there has to be a level of hunger that I just don't know. And again, we're not talking about rap. We're not talking about fashion. We're not talking about architecture. We're not talking about anything else. Just in produ production is just mind-blowing. And then to see that, while he's moving around and doing all this different stuff is just a testament to, I believe, his greatness. Um, so for me, one part that I really, or parts that I really enjoyed were the scenes and everything that went into the college dropout. You always hear about people talk about when you put your first album out, you're so hungry. You, the thirst that you have, the, the desire, the longing to um, to produce and put out something that's amazing that people are going to listen to and it's going to like change people's lives. That album, when you listen to it, even now to this day in its entirety, front to back, like there are not, I think I can think of like a handful of other albums that when I turn it on, make me feel the same way. Like it's an amazing album from beginning to end. Um, and watching just the trials that he went through to get that album made. He went through so much just to get the deal. Finally, 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 
Like, you know, he had to go rap for Jay-Z. He had to rap for Dame Dash. He had to rap for the executive Scarface. assistant. Who, who didn't even, like, she wasn't even anybody. <laughs> like she was, he was the marketing. One lady was the marketing. Yeah, but the other chick was like an executive assistant. And he was just like, I don't care who listens to me. I just got to make this deal happen. He finally gets the deal. And then... What was it? Maybe a few months after he gets the deal, yeah, he went to L.A. He went to L.A. to help somebody else work on their album and gets into the accident. We all know, you know, it was an awful accident. His jaw was broken in like four places. He couldn't do anything. Like it was awful to actually see them like messing with his <laughs> mouth. Like that was nasty. Um, and then just his sheer determination to still make it happen. I, I don't even like talking to people after getting like a cavity filled or if I have a toothache or something. I can't imagine try, standing in a studio with my mouth wired shut, like literally wired shut, rapping. Like just sitting and talking in front of this microphone. Like we be thirsty. Sometimes Man. our <laughs> jaws get tired. Like it's a lot. And so just to think about the t determination he had to make this album. And then, really quick, because I before you don't lose your place, don't lose my place. Um, but I think to go to beyond that is he was playing those songs in the Rockefeller office. He brought in Scarface, played the song, and these premier artists didn't get on. Mm -hmm. Like he's begging you, "Hey, get on my song," and these are classic songs, and people just like they're classic songs now, though. When you think about what music was back in at that point in time, but I feel like that Kanye's sound wasn't the sound. But I, I I agree with you. But I still think it was an offshoot of what Bad Boy was doing. It was still up tempo ish, like move to it. All falls down. I feel like Mace could be could have been on All Falls Down. No. Nah. Okay. <laughs> um. It just, I, I agree with you. It didn't make sense. He spent, what was it? Before he got the deal with Rockefeller, the one guy from Rockets who had signed to live in most really, really wanted him. Um, the people, I guess the A&R people at Capitol, they wanted him. But it was the higher ups that they couldn't convince that this guy is going to be the next thing. We need him. Let's, you know, pull the trigger, sign a deal. Um and, and just, go, ahead, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, but and I don't know how familiar people are, but those are two huge artists you just named. You said Talib to and live in most, death. most death. Yeah. But imagine the shift in industry if Kanye's on Rockets and not Rockefeller. Oh, it would have been totally different. Like because I, we don't know what Jay-Z becomes, and I, I joked, but I was seriously that said as we kind of looked at Jay's discography. In a versus, if he ever had to go against Kanye and they couldn't play mutual songs, it'd be a bad day for Jay. Jay would have a long night, mm -hmm. and not just Jay, but Rockefeller in general. Like when you get into state property and Kanye's all influence in all of them in that era, if that is gone, and I don't think Just Blaze would have been as good of a producer. Well, that's also true. Yeah. Uh, so I think that that was just telling to me is. As you look at all these names of people that are now showing up in this documentary, I don't know where they all are today, Nowhere. but I can promise you those higher ups that didn't get named in this documentary, man. They're, like, they're kicking themselves every time they see Kanye anywhere. They're just like, yeah. that could have been me. Those are, the, those are the guys that were in the garage with Steve Jobs. Those yep. are the guys that were in the garage. You had with, a chance to invest, but you just walked that, that, away. Walked away. Um, point. There it is. Um, College Dropout is arguably one of my favorite albums. It's got some of my favorite songs on there. Two words. It's literally, it's just a great word Concept. play. Yeah. Them going back and forth, literally two. Like, it's just an awesome song. To see that get made, to see how excited they were when they made it, that was dope. Um, and at the time, most Def was hosting um, Def Poetry, which was a great show on HBO. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. 
Jay Ivy was on there. Mm -hmm. Talib Kuli was on there. A lot of the people that you saw um, in this documentary were on that show. And to see, I did not realize how small that community of talent was yeah. from that era. And especially being from Chicago, a lot of Chicago, even now, Chicago talent has a really hard time on the main stage because Chicago rap, Chicago style rap, Chicago, that Midwest sound is not what's super popular now. And it never has been. Because even when I think about like artists like Twista or Do or Die or Scarface, like, yeah, they made it, but they don't get the recognition that I think that they deserve as rappers. Um, too much people talk too much about Eminem as far as like Midwest rappers. Mm. Um, but also to the and I was trying to write it as you were going, but I know we talked about like the producer role, we talked about the the rapper role and all of that. I think the other part that's missed here, and you were talking about how difficult it would be to pod if we had a toothache or something like that. Yeah, bro. He had the foresight to record his dentistry make through the wire and then put that video in there, even though the doctor at one point said it was illegal, but <laughs> somehow they still managed to do it. It wasn't that it was illegal. Well, it was illegal if he didn't have his own consent. And kind of was like, yeah, these are my people. Like I want them okay. to record. Um, but then he was just like, but do you want yeah. this show recording for you while you're getting your mouth ripped open basically? Yeah. And kind of was like, yeah. And to his mom's point, or the mom point here, and they were like, oh, we'll clean off the, the braces or the wire. Yeah, because my it, mom wants it. But he was like, no, don't clean it off. She wants it, like, with the blood on it. So, I I mean, I don't know how you're frowning your face, considering the stuff you keep for our kids. Which is kind of weird. True, true. But I think that just speaks to her in another light of how she views him in that no, no, don't bring me the cleaned up, washed up version. We heard her and saw her multiple times rapping the songs with him. Like, yeah. She was invested in the, the raps and in his career and in his success. And I think that probably goes understated in this. I think everybody said, and we'll get here in a minute, after his mom died, he was different. But I think when you can see the influence as a parent to children, it would just make it makes you feel away, or it made me feel away. And how can I make sure that I continue to raise, educate, but support even probably something that may not have been a huge interest? She might not have grown up listening to a ton of rap. Mm -hmm. She was an English professor, but my son loves it, and so I'm going to do everything I can to position him to get him to record her. Um, obviously, I don't think she made a ton of money. But get him the recorder, let him learn and hone his craft, and then support him. Uh, she didn't learn those lyrics because she listened to one song one time. No, yeah. she and, and the funny thing about watching that scene is that she was reminding him yeah. of what the words were to the song. And this was like a song that he wrote and when he was young. It wasn't something that was ever going to be on a record. But I 1,000% agree with you. Um you see very on, very early on in the documentary the way that his mom supports him. And watching the interaction between the two of them, I feel like that, the level of confidence and uh, I think the way, the way that she poured into his self-esteem and the way that she poured into him, I think if any message anybody gets from this documentary is we should all aspire to pour into our children the way that she poured into Kanye. I don't think Kanye was ever going to be Kanye if he had another mom. Agreed. If there was someone else who had raised him, it, we wouldn't have gotten what we got. Um, the way that she spoke to him, and, and even she said, she says, and I think in the Oprah interview that she did, that they did, she says, well, Kanye listens to me because he knows I listen to him. And that statement alone, I think, is so impactful as a parent because a lot of times we get frustrated. You know, there's so much going on and we don't hear our kids. And when we want them to hear us, 
uh, do they tune us out? Of course they do. But I think something that would ease that that stress or that that disconnect is when they feel when kids feel heard and seen and understood and loved, that's when you can bring out the best in them and that's when you can instill the best in them. So that the to your point, Donda, you know, may she rest in peace, the impact that she had on his life on all levels was just amazing. And so you saw like when he came in and he had the chain and they talked about, well, you could have bought like a house. Yeah. That could have been a very demoralizing conversation. Oh yeah. That conversation could have been way less. Like she doesn't know why he's coming back. She doesn't know mentally where he's at, where he just had a huge rejection in his life. And had she jumped on him, like you bought another chain, Mm -hmm. like you're trying to get on, you should be investing in that. Like that, the right thing to say probably would have been, you should have bought a house instead. I mean, she. What did she say? She was like, "What? When I saw you before, you had a chain, and I wasn't really happy with it, but I didn't say anything. But now that I see this one, right? And I know you don't even have a house yet, but I see this one. There'll be more houses. Right. Like that reaction alone, like yeah, like you said, that definitely uplifted his spirits after people were being grimy to him. And I feel like with her, you saw him the most quiet. Like in their conversations, there were times that he would just sit and listen. And I don't feel like you see that with most people. Usually he's the one doing the imparting. Where you, you see in the end where I forget the guy, Jer- um, Gerard um, Carmichael. Carmichael. And like he's sitting and he's talking. We've seen him at the, the recent brunch he did. And a lot of situations when he was talking to Bieber at his facility, he's always the one now seemingly having to be the person talking. There's not a lot of people talking to him like she used to. Um, And you got to also, as a parent, put it into real terms. We're seeing this grown up version, but understand she had to raise this young man. Right. And we think he's difficult for us. Imagine what it's like raising that kind of child who dropped out of college, who intellectually is just on a level that I imagine far su- f- succeeds or exceeds probably anybody else she ever dealt with, and but you have been headstrong and he's been headstrong and he doesn't have a father figure and you have to manage that and support that. Like just all the credit in the world to her uh, for that. Agreed. Um, I would say also about the college dropout stuff. Um, I really did like seeing all the songs develop. Um, but watching him coach that choir when they were singing through the wire, mm-hmm. watching that scene, it's like that I can totally see where the idea for Sunday service would come from. Um, Cause again, like we think about musicians in one light but people who produce music, love music, write music, there aren't very many aspects of music that they're not talented in, um, in some capacity. But we see for Kanye, everything as far as music goes, from writing lyrics to writing music, to composing music, to arranging music. Like he's just, for lack of a better term, just a genius at it. And to see just from beginning to literally to current end, how he's evolved as an artist and all the work and effort that he puts into his craft. There aren't a lot of people that I, that I like, that I follow whose careers that I'm even halfway interested in. I can say put in the same amount of effort that he does. And for what it's worth, you see the difference. You see the difference between him and every other rapper or every other producer. Yeah. Um, And and to that point, the biggest shock of the documentary for me was one. Well, I'll I'll say the biggest shock for me was I had no idea that D-Ray Davis (laughs) was the voice on College Dropout. I always thought that was Bernie Mac. I just assumed it was Bernie Mac. It was uh, one. I don't even think I knew D-Ray was from Chicago. I'll start there. 
Um, but it sounds like Bernie. And I don't ever remember hearing anybody say different. Like, I never remember hearing Bernie say different. Um, so it's like, okay, it's Bernie Mac. But then to see him in the studio with the voice, I, I text you. I'm just yeah. like, so D. Ray Davis, that's the thing. Like, did everybody else know? Or are we, we late? So I thought, because when I first saw it, I was like, oh, he's just reenacting mm-hmm. what Bernie Mac did. But then as you keep watching, it's like, oh, no, he did it. He did it. And so that was just like crazy. But again, it just kind of brings to he left home to pursue his dream. But without talent, it doesn't work. And I was watching a pod early and they said 50% of your success is you. 50% is you. Or no, it was, it was, you got to meet the universe halfway. And so whether you want to put it in Christian terms and say, whether if you don't work, you don't eat, or you got to get out of the boat and God will take you for the walk. At some point, you have to be willing to spend the time on your craft that gets you out of there. You can't just pick up and go to New York and you ain't been spending the necessary time to be the producer because he said the doing the production is just an internship. I want to rap, mm-hmm. but he definitely doesn't get a chance to rap if he's not top tier production. And for me, it really spoke to also him visually understanding. And I would y'all would have to fact check me on this, but his debut album had a mad skits. And so it's like you're putting these random skits on your debut album, and then you have the workout plan on your debut album. Like the risk involved and those falling flat on your face, because I don't know that anybody was doing it like that at that time. A skit here and there, I think Eminem might have had some in his. Yeah, he did. The scary one where he killed his wife. Well, well, ex-wife. Yeah. But this was like funny, different, but him. And so I just, is just the, the visionary that he is to, from the look to the backpack, to the understanding also who he is. And we saw a clip of the Nicki Minaj Joe interview that's to come where she said, every you everybody's trying to sound like someone else. You don't even know who you are. And going to Rockefeller could have easily been, all right, they're not accepting me as who I am and what I want to do. Let me change my rap. Let me, I think he's creative enough to come up with the raps, but he's like, no, that's not me. I'm different. I embrace different. I love being different and you're going to accept me for being different. And for me, that was just super motivating, like super encouraging And I hope for others that are out there that may not be getting what you feel like you deserve from people to say, be you. And if you're you long enough and you keep refining your craft, it'll catch on eventually. Um, I agree with all of that, really. Um, His desire to win, his desire to succeed. I think even to this day, it's what so many people who are successful will tell you that you have to be. You can, you have to believe that you're the best at what you do and nobody does it better because they all suck. Um, and that's a common gene, I guess, amongst people who are considered the great greatest at anything they've ever done. Like I listen to a lot of J. Cole because I love him. I think he's super dope. One of the best rappers to ever do it. Um, But even he, on his most recent record, like he's like, I have to remind people that I'm the best to ever do it. And there will never be anybody to ever do it like me because I am the greatest. Like in multiple, you know, lots of his albums, he said the same thing. Kobe, he would get on the court and he didn't care how long you've known him. What, you know, what y'all talked about before the game started, you know, what y'all practice and practice, like I'm coming out here to be the best, to show everybody I'm the best. And I dare you to challenge me on my authority of being the best. And that's just a common thing that you hear. 
and it's I think like you said motivating um when you th especially like as business owners we sit and we talk about well what do we have to do every day to make this pop what do we have to do every day to get more listeners what do we have to do and it's never oh well we just gotta wait for people to discover us we gotta wait for this to happen we gotta wait it's always what can we do to help ourselves and i think a lot of that gets lost now because everything goes viral. Like everybody's waiting for a viral moment. Everybody's waiting for one thing that they're working on to be great. When in reality, if you listen to anybody, they say you need like nine or 10 things going on so that when one thing, you know, really gets going, you can use that to push forward the other stuff or use that to fund the other, you know, projects or things that you have going on. And to like again to see how hard he worked for the drop um, college dropout to get made, like the scene where he's in front of everybody um, after he finally finished the through the wire video, and Dame comes in, and you think, oh, he's just gonna play the video because Dame don't walk in. No, he finishes getting stuff off his chest. He's like, I had to pay thirty three thousand dollars of my own money. Like, I didn't know how many people were going to show up when we sent the um, message, yeah, the invitation out on the two ways, but there's 200 people here. And from the speech that I was listening to, he wasn't expecting 200 people because he wasn't getting supported by 200 people from the label. Um, but people will take that kind of rejection. You get the deal, but they shelf your album because this is going on. You get the deal, but they're not giving you attention or anything because they've got all these other artists ahead of you. you. You know, you use those sorts of things to as excuses as like, dang, I guess I wasn't really supposed to make it. I guess I'm just going to give up and I'm going to go do something else. And the determination that it takes to be successful, everybody doesn't have that. Just the same way everybody's not meant to be a boss. Everybody, you know, is not going to achieve their dreams because Everybody doesn't have that drive. And for me, I think it reiterated some things that like there's a lifestyle that I want to live. Like there's like what we've talked about four different festivals this year and the lineup are, are insane on all these festivals. And I'm just sitting here calculating what I need to do, how many shirts I need to sell, how much hair I need to do so that we can do it all and take the kids on vacation. And so it's, I think, when you look at people like Kanye West and you see in this, in this, because of this documentary, you see where he came from. You see the struggle. You see how hard it really was for him to get on and then for him to, you know, navigate his way through life. It's like he did it. It sucked, but he did it. I can do it too. If I'm determined enough, if I'm focused enough, if I believe I am the best and I believe in my own hype, I can do it too. Um, so I agree with that. I will say, and y'all know I'm Kanye Stan, whatever. <laughs> um, I will say the part of this that's disappointing is once he got on, Kudu wasn't around. And because of that, we lost tons of footage from at least Cootie's perspective where there are other people that may have been around. Maybe I follow a couple of uh, Kanye fan pages. So I get to see kind of some of his day to day, but I felt like we were robbed and we didn't really get an answer as to really why he talked about when he went on that, the thing is life of Pablo tour. Mm -hmm. Yay said, come on. But then his team said, there's no space. And just seeing kind of that dynamic, shout out to Cootie for not, I would have been like, oh, you got big and you turned your back? Don't call me again. Yeah. And multiple times they had rifts for whatever reason or there was distance Awkward. or friction. And Cootie never, every, and again, we're going off one person's perspective, but seemingly every time he called, he was there for him. Um, and so having a friend like that, is also critically important. It's invaluable. Uh, it is. It's, it's invaluable to have someone that 
is there for you at the drop of a dime. Like he picked up and his whole life changed too. Yeah. Uh, to pursue this dream. And I, I believe he, he said it multiple times. I always believed he would become this. But to see your, him finally get there, and then it was the Jesus Walks. He's like, but I got to have Hype Williams direct this. And then it was like, oh, no, it didn't work. I, now I need y'all to come direct it. And they predicted that would happen. But, but just, he shot it twice with right. two different people. Yeah. And he hated it. Yeah. And he still came. And so that to me, like, if if that ever makes the kudos, that's like, shout out to you, man. Like, it's ego, it, or or lack thereof. But also, you see, because of his affiliation, yeah, he had jobs. So, oh yeah. So for he sure. easily, I would imagine. What were we watching? Could have been. Um, I'll let, while you're thinking, um, he could have said, "Hey, I'm working now. Like, I'm trying to pursue my career." putting this down and then running after you and then you have another bout where you like it could mess up stop my growth. Yeah. Good. Um I don't know if it was something I was watching with you or who I was watching it with, but it was recent and the it was uh, the dynamic it was two people. One of them was like super successful and they had a lot of ideas. They were talented. And the other person, while though although they were just as talented. Oh, I was watching um with Chadwick Bozeman when he played James Brown. That's uh, what it was. Um get on up. Yeah. And the guy, I, I don't know, um, I can't think of his name, but he was describing James Brown. And he was talking to a, a, like someone who played in James Brown's band. And he was the, the, the conflict was, how come you haven't gone out to do your own solo thing? How come you haven't gone out to do Bobby? Bobby, his friend Bobby. Um, he was explaining to the bandmate that there are people in this world where whether you like it or not, you, other people gravitate towards them because they're talented. They are, they have the voice, they have the personality, they have the, I guess, the output to handle real true stardom. And people like us, while we might be talented, we might be really good at what we do, we'll never be them. And i rather be there to support and you know, to still do my thing in the capacity in which I can do it at my greatest level, but to see someone else and support someone else in their dream and be an integral part of who they are is just as important. And a lot of people, I think the ego comes in. It's like, well, yeah, you're dope at what you do, but I'm really dope at what I do. So forget you. I'm going to go off and do my own thing. And depending on what you're doing, you're never as successful as a person whose ego is, you know, your ego is rubbing you against because you're not that person. And there's nothing wrong with not being that person because everybody needs a supporting, well, you know, all successful people need a supporting cast. Mm -hmm. And Cootie, I think his, the way that he viewed it, he was, you know, appreciative of the opportunities that, open the door for you know for what he was able to do but he recognized from very early on Kanye West is going to be somebody he is going to change the world I would just want to be there I want to be along for the ride yeah and I think you do see that uh because we, you you talked at one point you mentioned oh there's consequence and this was a long time ago <laughs> Rhyme Fest was around for a really long time. Still is. That's that, that's my point. So I think as much as Ye's career trajectory has g taken off astronomically, there are still very integral parts that have always been there. Maybe they haven't been as close all the time, but a lot of that group and that core um, really have been along for the, the entire ride, which I think has helped him. Um, the what, Speaking of crew, uh, two things. One, 
I wish we would have got to see more Virgil in the doc. I know it wasn't a Virgil doc, but maybe even how they met, uh, something more about when they were talking about yay in fashion, uh, seeing more of that interaction, I think would have been cool. Uh, they didn't touch on the fashion world a ton, uh, but again, I mean, not it was, really at all, for real, for real. Right outside of him moving the factory back um, and hot and seeing some of the stuff, I, I for whatever reason they didn't go down that route, and I get it. But if it's genius and you're encompassing him as a genius, I think that part would have been cool. Uh, I will say probably the the coolest part for me was the fashion show in New York when it was Ye standing there controlling everything like he does. And then you had Push and Big Sean and 2 Chains and Mike Dean and Virgil and Kid Cudi and all of them just behind him. Like just they are, are loving life. But he has the garden quote unquote sold out for his show but that was just I could just wish I can only imagine what that felt like in that moment to have that and it just kind of gives you for me it kind of gave you chills like that was kind of the precipice of everything he had worked for his music his fashion Madison Square Garden everyone's there to see me my family here my wife's here her sisters are here and they just killed it um so that was really cool. Uh, it was probably one of the cooler moments for me to see in the dock. But uh, yeah, it's fun for me. Um, I think my favorite moments in the dock are people reacting to mu his music for the first time. Mm -hmm. Like I think of everyone, Pharrell was my favorite. Shout he out to VA. Out. Like he walked out because he's listening to the song, obviously. So he's listening to the lyrics. And then he put it together the th the, the, through the wires, so like you were rapping through the wire. And then you come in and the chorus is through the wire and like the beat itself, like you see him, he's just like, yes, this is fire. And like, even when he came into the studio and Kanye rapped for him and he was just like, bro, I'm sorry. Like, I knew you did producing. Like, I knew you were a producer. Like, you my competition. Like, yeah. he saw that. But lit just his reaction to Kanye the rapper. He was like, bro, like, this is it. And he even said after he finished listening to Through the Wire, like, just keep that same passion. Everybody can. I see that you can. Don't let nobody take it from you, which for what it's worth, no one yeah. ever has. Um, and we should all be so fortunate to find something in our lives that we're that passionate about, um, whether it be our families or our success or our marriage or just anything like I feel I think people who lack passion about anything in life can easily find that there's nothing to live for when you're not passionate about something I think it makes life so blah and the act of pursuing said passion I think is it's super important because it gives you something, it, you know, to work, wake up for every morning, whether, like I said, it doesn't have to be music. It doesn't have to be your career. It can be your marriage. It can be your kids. There are so many things that you can be passionate about and to see it play out the way that it did for Kanye, despite any of the ups and downs that he went through, he is a successful person. He is a success story. There's not a lot that you can take away from him because he's earned he's earned the right to feel the way that he feels about himself. Uh, definitely, definitely agree with the last piece. Um, I will say to that, that, that comes, it's like a double-edged sword though. And so when you believe in yourself to the level that he does, and you've lived a life where you've seen the fruits of your labor and you've been successful at so many different things. You, I don't want to say he got bored. I think his mind and experience continued to expand. He started to go in rooms he hadn't used to have been in. And so we get to politics. 
And in music and entertainment, you can be this type of figure. You can be brash, you can be arrogant, like, especially in rap, like in a lot of ways that's desired. Politics, not so much. Politics is humility for the people. Uh, everything's for you. We just watched the State of the Union and the messaging there is way, way less me, way, way more we or y'all. And what turned that upside down was President Trump was a me guy for I, I, I. And, and I, me guy. And I think the difference is I believe all politicians are I, me guys. Oh, for sure. But it's not presidential to say I mean, I'm an I guy. It's not political to say I'm a me person. Right. But And so most presidential candidates are like quarterbacks or are viewed like quarterbacks or CEOs where they're supposed to be this. And so we saw that in the doc and we didn't get to see a lot of it because – and this was one of my criticisms. I feel like you record and then you edit. You don't not record. And so there were moments where Ye was kind of talking and going in Ye ways and Cootie cut the camera off. And I would have liked to have had the opportunity to hear or see more because although you as the videographer in that moment may not have agreed with it, there may have been people that did. And I would have liked to hear more of the story where he said they tried to uh, execute me and they pulled off my arms. I'm like, Deadpool, they grew back. I felt like that was going somewhere and we didn't get to hear the rest of that story. Um, but politics is different. But, and this is kind of my initial point where it's hard to pick and choose if a person is a person because. The same person we've spent a bunch of time on this episode and through this documentary celebrating for being told he can't do it and being rejected and overcoming is the same person that campaigned and the same person that was as passionate about music. And we talked about how much fire and passion you have to have to make that kind of quality music and entertainment. That's what we saw on display. But in a different medium and on a different platform and with a different topic, it is viewed totally different. And when you make statements about slavery, which we won't get into here, uh, but I will say, that's your phone. The freak. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I do agree with the statement and I got into someone on Twitter about it. And again, I won't go through that. But his messaging behind the hat is the same messaging he's been had, which is empowerment. And he said, putting that hat on was me being able to do something that no one thought was possible. What Donald Trump did, nobody thought could be done. A non-president becoming president, like that had well, never happened. Not that, what had happened. Ronald Reagan had never- Not happened. in well, that same No realm. one took him serious enough to think that it would ever happen. Right. So that, and we're not going to get into Reagan. Um, <laughs> uh, man, he was bad for, never mind. Um, yeah, he was bad times. Uh, but the point being, you, we as a people, I think it's our responsibility to be able to take the time in this society to listen when people like him talk. Because... If you just take the clips in which media loves to do, and this is on media, and I guess we're part media now too, there is a responsibility to articulate and put out the right, right message with context. And I know that takes credibility and that doesn't necessarily get you as many clicks, but to criticize and then everybody jump on sunken place, off his meds, needs to be in a, in a hospital but he's still produced, like he got out of the hospital and we see they're right back working and he's right back talking. And he talked about, I think it was in that documentary, in the documentary, but or it might've been on Instagram where he said, oh no, it was at the brunch where he said, if y'all were on my Instagram, y'all would think I was wilding, but I'm here today. 
Like, I'm good, but this is how I feel. And it's my social media, so this is how I'm going to express it. And I, we're using him because we watch his documentary. But I think there's a lot of people like him uh, that are not the norm in their approach. And we want to discard people because it's not presented in a way that we like. But we saw label execs we talk about that were far less successful. The world would be a much different and I believe worse place had he quit, had he not stuck with it. And there's a bunch of hymns that have come that I hope people that watch this documentary and others will back off this cancel culture of something that just goes against our norm and throw away all the other great stuff that certain people do. My turn? Yeah. <laughs> um, him aligning himself with Trump, the political stuff, um, I definitely wasn't feeling really any of it, mostly just because I think at that time it was really critical for Black people, Black culture to share at least a similar voice and what we wanted from the next presidential candidate, from the next president. Um, there was a lot going on. And I didn't think that Kanye West was the voice that we, that, I know Kanye wasn't the voice that I wanted to represent me in that light. I didn't want Joe Biden either. I didn't want Kamala Harris. Like there are quite a few other people that I would have picked and given where we are today, I don't want to say I told you so, but, you know, we're getting off of that. Um, but one thing that even within those situations, and when I look at other people who are, who go against what the cultural norm is, I don't like people's reactions um, and the whole cancel culture. And whenever a Black person goes against what is you know, culturally acceptable for black people in whatever light, like it, to me, it's really dumb. Um, it doesn't help us advance. It doesn't help us look more united. It doesn't, it doesn't help us. Um, one, we can't all have the same opinion. We can agree on the same end result, but we all don't have to, you know, agree on how to get there. We don't all have to completely see eye to eye on different aspects and for whatever reason it's like a laughing stock or it's it's a, a punching it's an easy he's an easy target because he chooses to continue to not be put into a box and even now like when you look at other black artists who have chosen not to be put in box and chosen to go against the grain. They're not as popular as they could be if they just went with what everybody says that they should go with. So um, I do appreciate the clip um, of him watching Tucker Carlson mm. um, because the um, Cootie, Cootie? Yeah. Cootie was telling him, nah, he's negative. He's negative. He's you know, he's he's not portraying you right. And Kanye is like, nah, he's completely understanding exactly what I'm saying better than how I could articulate it. And that was without even hearing all that Tucker had even said. Yeah. And I think that goes to a point that one, Kanye, you can look at I mean, from the very beginning of the documentary till watching an interview right now, Kanye has always talked in circles. And I think a big part of that is because he has so, and I, I know other people like this, they have so much going on in their heads. It's hard to translate what's here into speech that is acceptable to other people and it completely makes sense to other people. And Kanye is the kind of person that you have to pay attention to what he's saying because he'll go here, he'll go here, he'll go there, he'll go there. And then by the time he gets to the end, if you miss two or three of those points, you have no idea what he's talking about in the end. But if you paid attention to everything that he said, it all makes sense in the end. 
and taking sound bites from this and a clip from that. You can make anybody sound crazy. You can make anybody look crazy. If you cut and edit our podcast, you can make us look crazy. To put Kanye in that box and just completely write off everything that he says, I think is super asinine. Um, now, I don't agree with everything he says, and I really don't agree with everything that he does, but everybody has a right to feel the way they feel or look at things differently. And the fact that we've gotten to a place in culture where you're just not allowed to have a difference in opinion or we can't be friends anymore. I can't disagree with you on certain things or I'm looked at like I'm crazy. That doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I think as black people, we should be better at that. To have been as marginalized as we have been forever, that shouldn't be something that we're doing to each other on any level. Agreed. Um, so in closing, uh, I definitely agree with what you said. I will say, and this is not a slight or not meant to be a slight, but I think you could see from the beginning of the documentary when it was a trying time and how his mom responded to when there was a trying time and his dad responded. And I think both are valuable to him, obviously, but he was trying to express he was standing on his principles of talking about abortion and explaining how that can be perceived. And his dad's response was, well, write your speech next time. And I just think his mom would have handled that differently. And I think you can get to maybe you should write your speech, but I just think there's a better way to maybe have communicated that. And I think you saw Kanye's response in that moment was different yeah. from how, I think he would have preferred to have maybe been handled. And even the guidance he may have needed, that I think left some a bit to be desired. Um, so like I said, my, my final takeaway is obviously I'm, I've been a huge fan for a long time. I'm an even bigger fan of him. His ability to motivate, I think is second to none, maybe in today's society and generation for me. Um, he's definitely, I believe the most polarizing figure on this planet outside of maybe Putin at this moment, uh, which for, for very different reasons, but I just, I'm excited to see what, what comes of it. Uh, the STEM player, the STEM wear, there's the visionary him running around with Elon. I think nothing but futuristic things can come from that. Imagine something that he makes here and can play through your car. They're launching, you know, things in the space. He's working on architectural design. Everyone killed him for his house, but then they loved his house. Like, to your point, he doesn't miss. Uh, I'm looking forward to maybe the opportunity with p buying some merch, and I probably will eventually get a STEM player. I just want to know there's different colors. I want to get a different one. As I've seen the tech, I think the tech's dope. I think people that are saying, why would you pay $200 for an album are small minded, and he's not selling it to those people. But the people that can see, even in the preview of stemware, what it could be, I don't think he's someone you bet against. So I'm definitely excited to see what comes. And I hope you guys get a chance to check out the documentary. I know we talked a lot about it, but I still think if you haven't seen it, it's worth going to see because there's stuff obviously we missed. We can't cover what five and a half hours worth of documentary in an hour and 15 minutes, but definitely encouraging, definitely inspiring. Even if you're not a yay fan, but just a fan of a story. And he came from South side of Chicago. I think you got to see that too. Like he pulled up when it was time to pull up and he handled it peacefully, but he, he, that is in him. So again, excited, glad I got a chance to watch it. Thank you for joining me. And um, <laughs> I mean, we, we know I'm the bigger fan. So you may, there've been times I want to talk about stuff and you didn't, and you were willing to do this. So I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, we are signing off. I thank you again for y'all tuning in. Please like, share, and subscribe. Give us your thoughts and opinions. Tag Yay and others as well. <laughs> All right. Um, at Kanye. Oh, no, it's just Yay. At Yay, and it'll pop up. Uh, but yeah, man, it, definitely great, great documentary. And we look to hear more in music and entertainment. And definitely tune in Monday at noon as we will have a new show dropping as well. Y'all have a great day.